Hello, welcome to White Threads Floss Tube number 65. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to show you another project from my forthcoming book, Friesian and White Work Dutch Embroidery from Friesland. Today's one is just a little project. Uh, this is a needle case and you can also show you all around it so that you can see all the different bits. So you can see that it's a tri-fold uh, needle case. So it opens up like this and then out like this. Uh, you can see that there is a pocket that you can put your needle packs in if you want. So there's three of them, two on that side and one on the other and of course you don't have to put anything in them if you don't want to either and then there's also the doctor's flannel uh, with the needles in it as well so it means you can use it in lots of different ways if you had small enough scissors that weren't terribly terribly pointy or if they had a cover on them you could also slide them in to one of these pockets as well if you wanted to they are likely to fall out but you know you might be able to work it like that whoops it fell out <laughs> so uh, on the outside of it there's a button sewn to the edge and that's got a loop at the other end for that to go around and you can see how that works. So inside here we have some more of the beautiful Dutch heritage fabric. Um, I just loved these fabrics and you can also see that it's just a plain cream doctor's flannel. Then on the outside which is the bit you really 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 want to see um, we have a band of Frizzy and white work along there. So it's worked on, ooh, I think this one's 36 count linen with London dairy linen thread. And I have also included in the book um, conversions for if you don't have London dairy brand uh, linen thread. It's London dairy is also the same as Gold's Child linen, but I think I've got Ockens in there as well. And oh, maybe I've got pearl cotton. I don't know it's so long um pearl cotton which i don't recommend using because the linen thread just behaves differently than cotton thread does but i do know that some people will find it very very difficult to get it so that's why i've included it i don't recommend it though um so on here we have i don't know if you can see that very well i'll hold it up a little bit closer um, you can see that we have a man, main band along the beginning and then there's a bit on either side as well. And the stitches that I used on this are back stitch, whipped back stitch, top winder stitch, satin stitch. Oh, I think there's double back stitches, which is just two back stitches worked together, which looks a little bit like a bullion. So sometimes they didn't work bullions. They used other stitches instead that emulated that sort of style. And then there are also some eyelets as well. So it's a really lacy looking effect. Like it's not lace, but it has the effect of being lacy like. And this style of band would have been worked on the collar of men's shirts. Uh, they didn't work it on women's shirts. I don't know why. I suppose they had enough different decorative things on the women's costumes, like a lot of these beautiful fabrics. They would have had a lot of them. Um, and it all depends on which actual region the person came from as well, what they what they wore. So it was on the men's shirts um, that they often had these collars. And earlier men's shirts were quite narrow and then they got wider and wider as time went on and more and more elaborate in what the embroidery was. So this is in the style of a very early shirt. Um, it probably would have not had both of these repeats on either side. It would have just had one. And I also think it would have been that one that was missing. So it would have sort of pointed downwards in a way rather than pointing upwards like that. So I will tell you about the little button here on the side. That's a fabric covered button that I made covered in the same fabric as is on the inside. And I wanted a, a very insignificant and um, I wanted a very insignificant cover button. I didn't want one with a, a big shank at the bottom. And I inherited a whole lot of buttons from my grandmother. 
And amongst those buttons, there was this very finely covered, like it wasn't chunky, it was a covered button and it was very thin and beautiful and it was exactly what I wanted, but it wasn't covered in the fabric that I wanted. So I thought I would see how it was made and it was just a little plastic button, a very thin one, which had a fabric um, circle covering over it that on the back, there was just a little bit of running stitch um, next to a fold of the fabric. This is being explained very badly. I'll start again. So it had a plastic button, a circle of fabric, the edges of the circle were turned in and then a little running stitch worked around on that double edge and then it was pulled in together over the button. And it turned out to be beautiful and thin, just like this one. So I took my grandmother's covering off that button and I reused no, I didn't reuse it. I just looked how it was done and then I found another button the same size and I made my own. So if you're unable to get a covered button that you like as well, so one that doesn't have a shank perhaps, because I didn't want it sticking out too far, then that's the, something that you could do as well. So that meant that I could have my button exactly the same as the fabric inside, which was something that I really wanted to do. So that's probably all I can tell you about this project. Um, oh, it does have a twisted cord around the outside made from pearl cotton fibre as well. And I picked out two of the colours from the inside and put them there. So that's the Friesian White Work Needle Case from Friesian White Work Dutch Embroidery from Friesland. It's my upcoming book and it will be available probably, depending on where you are in the world, hopefully from about April, in about April, May, June, depending on where you are. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you did. If you would like to, it'd be great if you press like on this video. You're also welcome to comment, ask any questions that you have. Um, the more interaction that there is with the video, the more that YouTube sees that this is a popular channel that people enjoy and they will promote it to more people, which means that more people will get to see it, which would be really lovely for me because it means that I'm doing it for more people, which seems like a better use of my time. But I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Even if it's just you and me, then I'll keep doing it anyway. So thanks very much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.